As a SharePoint site owner, you're in charge of your own team site or sites. So what exactly is a team site? A SharePoint team site is simply a container for various components that are used for collaboration. The default components include libraries for storing reports, forms, documents, and various types of site assets. Lists for storing calendar items, announcements, links, and tasks and discussions, which allow team members to post comments on various topics. In this example, we're looking at a default team site, one that hasn't been customized. As a site owner, you'll be modifying the team site, customizing its look and feel, and managing its various components. You can break down the team site in three major sections, the header, the left navigation pane, and the page content area. For a site owner, the header is the dashboard. Under Site Actions, you'll find a list of options that are used to manage the site. From here, you can edit the current page or create new things, including pages, libraries, or even other sites. Take a look at More Options to see a full listing of all the things you can create on your site. If Microsoft Silverlight is installed, you'll see this attractive, scrollable list of options. Without Silverlight, a simple list is provided. You'll notice at the bottom of the Site Actions menu is Site Settings. This screen provides a summary of all the options that are available to verify, modify, or manage the settings for a specific site. You'll return to this screen over and over. As we move through our clips, we'll take a look at several of the options seen here. To the right of the Actions menu are a couple of small icons. The first is used for moving up through the site structure. For example, from the Marketing site, I'll open the Shared Documents Library, then the Presentations folder. Clicking the Navigate Up button displays a tree view that makes it easy to jump to a different location or back to where I started. To the right of Navigate Up is an Edit button, and next to that, a couple of tabs used to access the ribbon. Similar to Microsoft Office programs, the ribbon here in SharePoint is contextual. For instance, I'll click the Page tab and now the ribbon displays the commands I need to work with the page. Clicking the Edit button reveals Editing Tools and its two related tabs, Format Text and Insert. Notice that when the page is being edited, the Edit button switches to a Save button. Clicking this button closes the contextual tabs and displays the default Browse tab. At the far right end of the header is the name of the person currently logged in. There's a menu connected to this name with a few choices, including one to create My Site or manage the user's profile. Below the name are two buttons related to what are called tags, which are used to bookmark the pages you like or want to recommend to others. Near the tag buttons is a search box to look for content on this or other sites. Back on the left, beneath the header, is the navigation area. SharePoint sites typically include two separate areas for navigation. The top link bar is useful for providing top-level navigation, such as to other sites. The left navigation pane, known as the Quick Launch Area, provides navigation to resources within this site. As a site owner, you'll likely have the option to modify both the Quick Launch Area and the top link bar. At the bottom of the Quick Launch Area is one of the most useful links, one to view all site content. On this screen, a site owner can view all of its resources in one place, and it provides another way of creating new components on the site. Well, that gives you a look at a default team site. In separate clips, we'll take a more detailed look at how you can customize your site.